One, two, three, fuck it. right here and today before the start of the video I'd like to thank two people one of them is Dreamcom and the other one is Asus for letting me review this board so let's get started now starting the video we have a glimpse of the box itself it's more than the box though the front has the name of the board in it and changes its color when seen with light and you look around like left and right hinting to the RGB on the board it also shows main features of the board like the X570 chipset and the VR SLI support, PCIe Gen 4 and a special badge on it called AMD 50. This is there because it's AMD's 50th year in the CPU and GPU market. That's pretty good. The size of the box are not as significant as the rear of the box where it gives you a quick overview of the box with its features and sneak glimpse of the box itself is an image printed on glossy paper. It also shows a feature of the board that was not mentioned, which was Wi-Fi 6 support. Now moving in, you will see the board itself under a plastic cover for the first time, with the text Welcome to the Republic on the box. Taking a look at the box, it's spectacular. It's breathtaking, actually. With two main RGB zones, one over the IO cover and the other one on the ROG logo. You can also take a look at the chipset fan on the board, which is a 40mm fan that sparked a lot of controversy. Will it be loud? Will it be noisy? Will it be whiny? For IO, it's quite well off. Starting from the extreme left, a BIOS reset switch and a clear CMOS button. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 antenna ports. Two banks of USB ports with two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports at the top and then two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports at the bottom. Next, you have one 2.5 gig LAN port with two more USB Gen 2 ports at the bottom. Next to that, you have another LAN port. This one is a normal 1 gig one. With, US with USB Gen 2 and USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C ports. Last of all, you have your audio ports. The amount of cooling or the power delivery on the board with the massive metal heat sinks over the CPU power area then the chipset cooling is a lot. As this board will be sufficient to handle the over 1000 watt 3900X that is coming out. That's pretty amazing. Overall, the board is really made of metal. Like really nice premium metal with brush feeling and dark colors. You can basically not really see the PCB that much. It's mostly industrial looking with a bland color scream not screaming out with red accents or pink color or anything like that. And it's mostly dark colored. There are easily accessible buttons such as the reset button and, and a physical L12 cooling switch which is pretty cool but I don't think we'll be testing that because we don't really know how to do that. This, I will find, is something like for those style of diehard overclockers or serious serious PC enthusiasts as the board doesn't look cheap and will not be cheap. For accessories, you get the typical manual stickers and then what's special is the coaster as you can put your Mountain Dew on it when you're personally gaming on your system along with a personal thank you card with a 20% off coupon for cable mod cables. You also do get motherboard accessories which include the Wi-Fi antenna, M.2 screws and a special tool to help you mount your front panel connector cables to the motherboard. That's actually very useful. This is the end of the overview for the Asus Crosshairs 8. So stay tuned next week where we do go into more in depth like performance wise and how the VRM fans actually whine if they do whine. So stay tuned next week for that. So as for now, I'll say I bid you guys farewell. Peace out.